Welcome to this service of evening prayer according to the Book of Common Prayer. You may care to note that the readings this evening will be from Zechariah in the Old Testament, chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, and from the New Testament, the Revelation of St John the Divine, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14, and for the psalm, we shall be at Psalm 147, the first 12 verses. You may wish to pause in order to find those readings. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that, at the last, we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, Open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we
we turn now to Psalm 147, verses 1 to 12. Oh, praise the Lord, for it is a good thing to sing praises to our God. Yea, a joyful and pleasant thing it is to be thankful. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem and gather together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth those that are broken in heart and giveth medicine to heal their sickness. He telleth the number of the stars and calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and great is his power. Yea, and his wisdom is infinite. The Lord setteth up the meek, and bringeth the ungodly down to the ground. O oh, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, Sing praises upon the harp unto our God. Who covereth the heaven with clouds and prepareth rain for the earth. And maketh the grass to grow upon the mountains and herb for the use of men. Who giveth fodder unto the cattle. And feedeth the young ravens that call upon him. He hath no pleasure in the strength of an horse, neither delighteth he in any man's legs. But the Lord's delight is in them that fear him, and put their trust in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now a lesson from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 4, beginning to read at the first verse. Zechariah is one of those short books of the so-called minor prophets that we find towards the end of the Old Testament. He was operating in the early 6th century before Christ. Zechariah was particularly concerned with the restoration of Jerusalem and the temple after the Israelites returned from their exile. Zerubbabel, whom we hear of in the reading, was called governor and may have been governor of Jerusalem. Along with Joshua, he was engaged with the laying of the foundations of the restored temple, and he was much encouraged by the visions of Zechariah, of which we hear some now. And the angel talked with me, came again, and wakened me as one is wakened from sleep. He said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a lampstand, all of gold, with a bowl on the top of it. There are seven lamps on it, with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on top of it. And by it there are two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered me, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my Lord. He said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain. And he shall bring out the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. 
Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range throughout the whole earth. Here endeth the reading. The Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Saviour. For he hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, Amen. <coughs> there follows a New Testament reading from the 21st chapter of the book of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Revelation is the last book of the Bible and it's full of symbolism that would have been familiar to its original audience but is somewhat lost to the modern reader. The book envisages tremendous opposition to God and to the people of God, which indeed was the case when the book was written uh, at the time of the Emperor's Nero, or more likely Domitian, around the end of the first century AD. Our reading this evening, chapter 21, is the penultimate chapter. Chapter 21, beginning to read at verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters and all liars, 
Their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulphur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the Spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and the radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites. On the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Here endeth the reading. The Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. we continue in prayer for those caught up in tragedy and disaster. O Lord our God, source of all goodness and love, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Amen. And a prayer in this time of coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. Lift up those who are brought low. That we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And in a moment of silence, we pray for those people or situations that most especially lie in our hearts at this time. The second collect at evening prayer. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works to proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen and a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all now and evermore. Amen.